Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. First off today, I'm going to do a service to humanity by showing you this at the beginning of the video. There is somebody watching this video that has been out trying to get their PTO shaft on and they can't get it on. They've tried penetrating oil, hammers, everything, can't get it on. Came in, Googled, PTO won't go on. Found this video. I'm going to show you what you're doing wrong. But you got to promise me, let the video run to the end, even if you're out trying to get your PTO shaft back on. Don't kill my watch time. So don't, don't, don't shut the video off after I show you this. But if you've got a PTO shaft like this, and there are thousands of them out there, and you're trying to get it on by pushing this collar up like this, that will not work. It's kind of hard to show with it not being on the tractor. What you've been doing wrong is that. You've got to pull this, this collar back to get the PTO on. Now, you're welcome. See you later. Go on. Don't, don't turn the video off. All right. Today, for the rest of you, I'm going to do a little basic update on how PTO shafts work. If you're new to tractors, you may not know what's going on inside a PTO shaft. PTO shaft basically is a yoke on the end. One, one end goes to the stub shaft of the tractor. The other goes to the gearbox. And then torque tubes inside, which we'll talk about today. And then the shield that goes on top of it. So let's talk first about what we just talked about, how they hook onto a tractor. There's basically, that I know of, three different designs for getting the PTO hooked and locked on the tractor. And basically, if you go look at your tractor, you've got that stub shaft, PTO shaft, that comes out of the tractor. It's got a groove in it. And how you lock these on, if you look in there, when I pull this back, there's, there's ball bearings in here. There's three of them around the, the splines. And when I pull this back, it releases those ball bearings. And then I can slide this on to the PTO shaft. And so what you do is you pull this back, you slide it onto the PTO shaft past that notch, release it, and then when you pull it back, when those ball bearings get in that notch, they'll spring into place and lock on. So there's one method of these PTO shafts getting put on tractor is pulling this back to release those splines. Now the next type works kind of the same way except you twist the collar to release the ball bearings. Now the third way that these go on tractors is a push rod. A little push rod right there, spring loaded. And how that works, if you look down here in the spline, that rod has a notch in it. And so when I push it over, that's smooth on the bottom. So you push it over, you push this on your tractor stub shaft, release it, and then when it comes back and finds that notch, it locks in place. And you won't get a PTO shaft off if it's on without pushing that, or twisting a collar, or pulling back a collar. And you won't get that PTO shaft on the tractor if you're pushing forward on that collar instead of pulling back. So that's how the yokes work. Now let's talk about the torque tubes on one of these. And the early tractors, the early implements, had a square torque tube, and that's a great design. And I wish they'd have stayed with it, because it's nice and easy to replace, nice and easy to put together if the two halves came apart. But today, we don't have square torque tubes, but we've got a, like at least a hundred different designs of torque tubes. And this one right here is a triangle or a bell-shaped torque tube. But if you went out and pulled all the PTO shafts apart on all your implements, you'll find all kinds of different designs. There's uh, some that have multiple splines, there's octagons, there's um, some that don't even look like each other, but they fit together and carry the torque load. So there's all kinds of different designs. So if you damage a half of your PTO shaft, you got to get the same exact one to replace it. And we'll talk about that in our next video. But one point I want to make here today, if you separate your two halves, the male and the female come apart, and you've got to get them back together and you're struggling with it, on most of these, they ought to go back in any way you want to put them. I don't know why this one couldn't go in any way, but it'll only go one way. See that flat spot on top? Others are rounded, but that one's flat. If you don't match that flat spot on this one up with the female flat spot on the underside, they will not go together. So if you're struggling getting your PTO shaft back together, find the flat spot on top of one of the lobes and match that up with the other part and it'll go back together. Now, a few years ago, um, 
Bush Hog had a 3210 cutter, and I, my, other companies may have used this PTO shaft too. And if you pull the two halves apart, there were like 15 splines in there. And to get it back together, you had to find that one spline that was flat on the top. And if you found that and matched the male and female up, it would go back together. But if you didn't, it would not go together. And it was a pain in the rear to get back together. So that's how your PTO shaft works. Now, I want to tell you today how you can damage PTO shafts. And in my next video, I'll tell you how to prevent damage and how to fix it if you've got it. So how you can damage PTOs, first off, if you store your implements outside, a lot of times a little surface rust will accumulate in there. Or you can, in regular operation of moving PTO shafts in and out, catch a burr. They get a little metal burr in there. And if you get either one of those, they get hard to pull in and out. And I'll talk in my next video about how to prevent that. But you can also bend a PTO shaft, and there are a few ways to do that. And I'm going to tell you about those now so you can steer away from them, not let that happen. The first way to bend a PTO shaft is you buy a new implement and you don't measure to see if that PTO shaft is too long. And a PTO shaft, it might just barely go on the tractor when the implement's on the ground, but when you raise it up, when you get level, that's when the PTO shaft is compressed as much as it will be. So if it, if it barely had enough play, pulling it back, sliding the two halves together to get it on the tractor when the implement was on the ground, you could raise it up and put everything in a bind. And one of three things will happen if you put that in a bind, if the PTO shaft is too long. You'll blow out the back of your gearbox, you'll break off the stub shaft of your tractor, or you could bend the PTO shaft, and we don't want any of that. So if you buy a new implement, measure the distance when it's a level with the tractor, and make sure your PTO shaft has enough play to allow that to be at that point. And if it doesn't, you'll have to cut the PTO shaft, and I've got another video that I'll post a link to that shows how to do that. You can also bend a PTO shaft if it's too short. And I have a post hole digger that if I lift it all the way up, if I pull my position lever control on the three point all the way back while I'm using it, the two halves will separate. And if it's going around at that time, it'll likely bend one or both ends of it. And I've had to replace two of them. I don't, I don't get it. And I, I made it a little longer last time and I think it's okay now, but if your PTO shaft is too short and it comes apart, especially under load, you can damage it that way. So too long, too short is bad. Now the next way you can damage a PTO shaft, and I hear a lot of people talk about this every year, and I mentioned it earlier. If you've got a quick hitch and you like pull up your levers or release your keepers that lets you get out from your implement and you forget to do the PTO shaft, you can drive away and you'll hear a clang and the back half is laying on the deck of the implement and the, and the uh, front half is still attached to the tractor. Now that will normally not damage the PTO shaft, but here's a very important tip. If you do drive away and separate the two halves, don't back up because that's what kills PTO shafts. What happens on the tractor end of the PTO shaft is that falls down, hits a drawbar and goes to one side and then if it's touching the ground, when you back up, you're going to start digging a trench with that thing. And that's a real easy way to bend a PTO shaft. So if you do separate the two halves, stop the tractor, get back, take the one off the tractor, put it back, match it up with a cutter one, and slide it back together. The next way you can bend a PTO shaft, and I've seen this often, is on certain tractor implement combinations, when you raise the implement up all the way, the deck of the implement, usually a brush hog, can come in contact with that PTO shaft and actually bend it. So, if you're looking at a used cutter and you see a perfect circle cut in the shield of the PTO, that's what happened. So if you buy a new implement, hook it up to the tractor, before you lift it all the way up, have somebody back there watching as you gradually lift it and make sure that PTO shaft doesn't come in contact with the deck of that implement. Now finally today, a real easy way, and this happens every year to lots of people, is driving through a valley or a draw, what we call in the Ozarks. And what happens is, let's say you've got a, a six foot bush hog on your tractor and you're coming down a steep hill and then you start to drive up it and the tractor's headed up the hill and the tail wheel of the cutter is still coming down the hill, that puts that PTO shaft in an awful bind. 
And I'm going to roll a video right now that shows me doing that without the PTO shaft on the cutter tractor and, and what happens. When you start up that hill, uh, you put everything in a bind and you're going to tear up your gearbox or your tractor PTO shaft, but usually you'll bend the PTO shaft and have to replace it. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to prevent the problem of your PTO shaft not extending. It happens a lot of times first time you hook up your implement to use it. And I'll also talk about how to repair a bent PTO shaft, which will save you some money. Thanks for watching.